last year I think you had uh, won a Grand Prix for uh, Monday working with Cancer Pledge. Uh, which is that one campaign that you're really betting on this year? We have um, some fantastic work. Actually, we have done a follow-up for Cancer Pledge with one of our clients, okay. which is uh, a fantastic piece of work. And I think also we've, we've got some great pieces from Toyota mm -hmm. and Tide in, uh, in the US. So we're very excited about those pieces. They're doing very well. And some work from London for EE. So that's doing well. And we have some really wonderful work from Dubai as well. Okay. So a lovely piece from New Zealand. So mm -hmm. it's, um, and Germany has got some really strong work as well. So we've got some really, you know, very excited about the work and it's very, un very different. And which are the parkets that have really surprised you this year? The, which, which ones? What did you, uh, sorry, I didn't... Which, which markets oh, which have... Markets I think what's really nice is, I mean, as such as we're part of the publicist group, and so we sort of share a lot of, uh, a lot of clients, and um, we've seen really strong work across the globe, which has been fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, there's been some great pieces from, as I say, some smaller markets in, in Europe, and um, some great pieces from South America. And then one piece I was saying, um, which I love, is from uh, Leo's in India for um, Gatorade. And I think, you know, that's a fabulous piece. We do, it, we, do, um, we do a meeting with all of us on Sundays when we get here, and then we share some of our favorite work. So it's a, it's a great chance to really see what all our colleagues are doing. And probably my favorite piece has come from our sister agency, Marcel, which was the orange piece for women's football. Oh, yeah. Which, um, which is fantastic. So uh, I think it's great. Yeah, yeah. And also tell me about a competitor's work that really impressed you this year. I mean, I think there's, there's fantastic work from Coca-Cola has been really, really strong. A personal favorite, which is, you know, particular piece of work I like is a uh, cause light. Mm -hmm. um, I think that was great as a capturing a moment with the black square. There's been some really fantastic work from InBev. We've okay. seen, you know, a, again, consistently showing up across the piece with a lot of their work. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's some great things there. Again, for local European uh, clients with their beers like Dupla, um, but also Corona and so forth as well, and Bud. So, yeah, some great stuff. And Stella actually has done very well as well. You know, tell me, uh, what according to you makes Can Lion 2024 different from the previous editions of the festival? That's a good question. Um, I think it's always you can just you. It's it's so much. It's as much about what's going on in the Palais as what's going out of the Palais. And I think you're getting a real feeling here of um, a resurgence of media you're also getting uh, a lot of more platforms mm -hmm. um, so I think you'll see a real presence uh, there and they're sort of more actively engaged with the creative discussions I think than maybe previous years um, but it, it feels very business <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or not <laughs> okay that's an interesting thing. Uh, uh, but you know, tell me, uh, Saatchi and Saatchi, uh, India, uh, is led by two very promising CCOs. One is uh, Rohit Malkani and the other one is Karthik Smetasek. Um, last year, they came up with some really good work, which was also sent to Cannes. Yes. But this year, we don't see a representation from uh, India. Uh, why? Why so? I think they, they, you're right, last year there were some fantastic works and, uh, and particularly in film and we were so excited um, that it shortlisted and kind of got recognised um, and it really was exceptional work. There, ha there is some really interesting work coming through but you know as always you, you sort of building to when is the right time to get you know the impact and so we felt some of the entries weren't ready and and so next year I think we'll see more but there's still been some really interesting work um, and you know there's some work not all work 
is ripe for awards, but it doesn't mean it's not great Good work. work. Yeah. You yeah. know, and I think particularly in an international festival, mm -hmm. you know, I think you you sort of if some work feels you just know that actually it's amazing, but it's just not going to do its job in a in a in an inter international festival. But you know, so as someone who spent 16 years in various roles at Sachi, what would your advice be to both the CCOs and for Paratosh, the CEO? I think the thing here is to really think about. Um, I mean, this is this is the, the advice for everyone. It's thinking about work that works. Mm -hmm. So I think we're seeing. You know, there was a. I suppose a reaction to maybe overly purpose-led work mm -hmm. last year that was yeah. awarded and I think we're now seeing that reaction and there is a resurgence of people really wanting to reward hard-working work. Okay. Um, I think it's again really interesting, again everyone ran towards AI um, and while AI is omnipresent mm -hmm. it's not the beginning and the end of, a, of an idea. It's not an idea, it's a, it's a way of bringing work to life. Mm -hmm. It's a way of us becoming more efficient in our production and it's a way of us becoming more efficient in our data, but it's not an idea in itself. So I think we're seeing the end of that and maybe mm -hmm. a, more, a, a, a way AI is actually being used in the process of making work, which is exciting. You once said uh, creativity is a future superpower. So I want to understand from you what kind of work has Saatchi done globally and India maybe that has kind of set the agenda for the future. I think it's, um, you know, ultimately, no matter what the future is, it's human. <laughs> and I think, you know, we can talk about data. But always remember data is just humans in disguise. And we can talk about, you know, we might be asked to do work for channels, mm -hmm. but actually we should always think of the challenge mm -hmm. first. And we should always think about, you know, what do people want mm -hmm. rather than what do often our clients want to tell them. They can be two diff very different things. Right. And actually, I think you get to much more exciting ideas if you really think about the data and the people and the audience as human and just a and make our work human. So no matter how technologically advanced we become, mm -hmm. the element of idiosyncratic <laughs> human emotional behavior right. is the future. So would you say it's human-led work over tech-led work for you? For me, tech is always sort of the means to reach audiences, to understand them. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, there is so many wonderful things with utility that mm -hmm. tech enables. Right. So I would never, it's the marrying of the two, but I think tech without a human understanding and behavior is uh, is kind of devoid of, of the why. Thank you for that very distinctive perspective. Thank you again, once again, uh, Kate, for speaking to us. This is the second year in a row, and I hope to speak to you again next year. <laughs> it's wonderful to talk to you and lovely to see you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mm -hmm.